Welcome to the annual Bloodborne Pathogen Training. So what is a Bloodborne Pathogen? It is a microorganism that's carried in the blood and can cause disease in humans. What we typically look at are three types of hepatitis. Hepatitis A, B, and C. Hepatitis A can be person-to-person -person contact. Hepatitis B can be intimate contact or through needle sticks. And hepatitis C can be through contaminated needles along with equipment. Who's at risk for hepatitis A? We first need to discuss it's the most prevalent form of hepatitis. It can give a mild liver inflammation. It's highly contagious and it is found commonly in areas where there is poor sanitation. In fact, if you go into most restaurants, you will see a sign that says employees must wash their hands prior to returning to work. And that is specifically to reduce the risk of hepatitis A. Who's at risk? Well, people who unknowingly ingest food or drink, someone that they have personal contact with or have intimate relations with someone who's infected, caring for someone who's ill and infected, travelers in countries where hepatitis A is prevalent. So what kind of symptoms do you have? Well, you can have pain in the right side of the abdomen. You can have discoloration or jaundice. You can have nausea, vomiting. You can feel weak, sometimes flu-like symptoms. Is there prevention for hepatitis A? Yes, there is. There's vaccinations, two shots, and they limit the contact with the infected person. Hand washing is a very important part of all of this. If you are disinfecting an area of someone who is infected, you would use a 10 to one water to bleach solution. And as always, personal protective equipment. Hepatitis B, well, that's a lifelong infection. It can, in fact, cause some scarring of the liver, uh, which can lead to cirrhosis, potentially liver cancer. The mode of transmission can be blood-to-blood -blood contact, human bites, mother-to-babies at birth, and, of course, intimate contact with someone who may have that illness. Some facts about hepatitis B. The virus can survive up to seven days, even dried. A teaspoon can have up to a billion particles of HBV. And it is 10 times more common than HIV. Symptoms of hepatitis B can be very similar to those of hepatitis A, with the exception of that they can pass this from person to person through blood or potentially intimate contact. Is there a vaccine for hepatitis B? There is. It's a three-shot vaccine given initially 30 days and then 180 days after the initial shot. There's a determination by the employer at who the at-risk employees are, and you always have a right to decline the shots. That declination of the shots does not waive your right to the shot. You may at any point in the future have that shot. If an incident were to happen and you felt that you had exposure, you would have a conversation with your health care provider, and at that point, a determination would be made as if you were to start the series of shots at that point. Hepatitis C can be a lifelong illness. It can have an acute response where you will have illness over a few weeks, and then it will go into remission for a period of time, but it will continue to be chronic where it may flare up occasionally. Hepatitis C, the modes of transmission for hepatitis C, sharing of needles. If you are born to a mother who has hepatitis C, needle sticks if you work in a healthcare facility, or if you are a recipient of a blood transfusion prior to 1992 puts you at risk for hepatitis C. Millions of Americans have hepatitis C, but many don't know it. People born from 1945 to 1965 are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. People can live for decades without symptoms. Left untreated, hepatitis C can lead to liver cancer. But treatments are now available that can cure hepatitis C. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. We got tested. It could save your life. There is currently no vaccination of hepatitis C. The treatment now is an oral therapy that can go from 8 to 12 weeks, and there is a 90% cure rate. The district is responsible to have an exposure control plan, which is a written program which will outline the employees who are at risk and describe the procedures for those who are at risk, whether they are using engineering practices or basic work practices and any personal protective equipment that they would need along with any hepatitis B vaccination that was being offered. We want to take a couple of minutes to talk about universal precautions, hand washing, uh, treat all human blood and fluids as if they are infectious, 
If you are doing a cleanup of an incident, make sure that you wear gloves and personal protective equipment to protect yourself from any, any kind of exposure. CDC TV presents Health Matters. At the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, we are very interested in preventing transmission of disease in, in our community. People aren't washing their hands as often as they say they are or as often as they should. And the germs can live on our hands for quite some time unless we clean them. If we don't clean them and we go and touch something in the meantime, we can spread those germs to other places or other people. And disease can be spread this way. When people do regular hand washing, especially with children, that you supervise that hand washing so you make sure the children are doing it properly and for the length of time that's necessary. They're coughing and sneezing onto their hands and touching doorknobs. They're using shared objects like pencils or toys. And disease is passed easily from one child to the next. Try and avoid sneezing into your hand because you just contaminate them and then spread those germs everywhere. Focus on sneezing into your elbow like this and then you don't contaminate your hands. Turn on the water, wet your hands, apply a good amount of soap and lather up, and then focus on washing your hands for about 20 seconds, about the time it takes to sing happy birthday twice. The best way to wash your hands is using running water and soap, but sometimes we don't have that available. So think about carrying with you a hand sanitizer. That should have at least 60% alcohol content. It's important to realize that those agents don't remove soil and other material that might be on your hands. And in that case, you really need to use soap and water. If you've been touching objects all around you all day long, just assume that your hands are contaminated and make sure before you prepare food, you wash your hands. Before you eat, that you wash your hands. You can't emphasize hand hygiene enough. Clean hands save lives. Keeping your hands clean it's a very important activity, both at home, at school, at work, and in the healthcare setting. Hand hygiene or hand washing is the single most important thing that you can do to help prevent the spread of infection and to stay healthy and well. What if an exposure does occur? Wash the exposed area with soap and water. If the exposure is in the nasal and the mouth area, flush those areas also with water. Report the exposure either to your supervisor and or uh, your healthcare provider. And post-exposure, you may look at the series of shots again, remembering that while you may have signed a declination form, you never waive your right to having no shots. <laughs>